Hey friends, it's Mandy from Chapel Forge. Today we're going to talk about flash food. Um, so if you follow me on Instagram or uh, Facebook, you've seen me post about flash food many times. I think I've been using flash food for, I'm going to say close to two years. Um, I learned about it from a friend and we have it locally at our giant stores. Um, I know that it is kind of expanding into other areas. So if you download their app, you can check it out and see if it's available in your area. It's simply called Flash Food. It's like kind of a purpley blue background with a leaf on it. Um, I'll leave some links in the description too so that you can check that out and see if you have it available. So today we are going to talk about this haul that I got from Flash Food and we're going to talk about how I got all this food for half price. All right, so if you've never looked at Flash Food before, like I said, go into your app store and download the app, see if it's in your area. Um, I know that I've seen, I think like Food Lions maybe and things like that. I know it's trying to expand. I wish every grocery store offered it because, you know, if you've ever worked at a grocery store, you know how much food goes to waste and it's really sad. And I know there's rules and whatever. Um, and sometimes stuff gets donated and things like that. But Flash Food, I feel like at least, is really making a dent like locally for us. I mean, I know a lot of people that shop Flash Food now that it's been around here for, like I said, I think it's been a year or two. Um, there's a lot of food not going in the trash. So typically what I do is, so I showed you what I got. Now, obviously this looks a little bit different because I had to put the sausage and the fish and the things like that in the fridge. Um, typically what I do when I shop Flash Food is I go for almost always go for strawberries because he, around here they're typically five dollars a quart um i think they do it by a quart right oh, i guess a pound which is more or less a quart basically like if you were to buy it locally it would be about a quart's worth um so on flash food they're 250. um so i must always go for those these two pound boxes are usually about 450 so you're saving even more money when you get the two pound box um these packs of mushrooms are normally a dollar and some change. So I often go for mushrooms. I know they're not like the highest quality mushrooms necessarily, but we're still getting a lot of the great benefits that come with mushrooms. I'm personally not a huge mushroom fan, but my husband loves them. Um, and he's usually pretty good about masking their texture. I just don't like the squishiness of them into eggs and things like that, but I can also freeze dry them and powder them. So, um, I also got carrots this time. I got the organic carrots, which I don't typically buy baby carrots, but they had like 15 or something of these and they're the organic ones. Um, uh, some of my strawberries were organic. Some of them weren't. I did get some red raspberries which the kids already ate, but they were just two little small packs. Um, I almost always go for these nature's promise sausages. <clears throat> so they have like, this one is like mild Italian chicken. Um, they have like spicy, there's cheesy, whatever. Um, I almost always get those. If nothing else, we'll use a couple of them just in like breakfast, throw them in eggs and stuff. Um, we always have eggs because we have chicken. So we're always looking for ways to like, you know, make our eggs more exciting. Um, I just want to get the fridge closed. I just want to show you this too. So I got this chop kit. Again, I typically would not buy things like that, but when it's like a dollar, a dollar fifty, and I can just add some homemade yogurt and homemade mustard and some seasoning to it, and boom, we have a quick side like coleslaw or something. You know, I'll grab it. I wouldn't make a special trip out to the store just to get one pack of you know chop mix, but I was already there getting all this other stuff, so why not? Um, <clears throat> okay, so what we're gonna do with this stuff. So strawberries, what you can do with those, you can freeze dry them, um, and then basically you just have like ones you can eat or you could rehydrate them. I don't often rehydrate my strawberries. We just throw them into oatmeal, yogurt, um, eat them, normally we just eat them like a snack. Um, you could also put them in your dehydrator and you could make like strawberry gummies. Um, you can make strawberry chips, meaning you just make them dry a little bit longer. Okay, sorry children crises. So strawberries, you could freeze dry them, dehydrate them. Um, you can obviously make strawberry jam or strawberry jelly. Um, we love strawberry jam. It's probably one of our favorites. Every time we make it, it's always the one that goes first, even though there's 20 other flavors on the shelf. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to cut the tops off. The tops are going to go on freeze dry trays so that I can make strawberry powder. And then the strawberries themselves, I'm just going to macerate them with a little bit of sweetener maybe a little sugar, maybe honey. I'm not totally sure. We'll get there. Um, and just make some strawberry sauce. So that'll be amazing on pancakes, waffles, oatmeal, yogurt. 
Um, I mean, there's zil what could you not put strawberry sauce on? Like strawberry sauce is fantastic. So um, that's what we're gonna do with our strawberries. With our carrots, we're gonna do something new with our carrots. So um, in my pressure canning book that I really love, um, I have this one, The Complete Guide to Pressure Canning. I also have the ball book, of course, but this one has some interesting things. So in here, there's a carrot soup recipe um, and it calls for carrots, onions, celery, stock, water, garlic, um, salt and pepper. Amazingly, I have all of those things. So I had a friend that gave me a crap ton of celery from their garden that I need to use up. So I have that. I have some onions um, that really need used up too. Um, we just made some stock the other day, so I already have that handy and ready to go. It's turkey stock. It calls for chicken, but I'm not worried about it. I think it'll be fine. Um, and garlic, I have tons of garlic that we grew last year. So um, that's what we're going to make today. We're going to make that um, carrot soup. We're going to pressure can it, get that on the shelf. I think with my mushrooms, I have not canned mushrooms before, but I think we're going to try canning some of the mushrooms. Um, unless I have freeze dry tray space. So your carrots, a couple things you could do. If you don't have a pressure canner or carrot soup doesn't sound appealing to you, um, you could mix it with like a pumpkin puree or a butternut squash puree and kind of cut that carrot flavor if that's not something you really love. Um, you could, theoretically, I guess you could puree it and put it in the freezer and then you could add it into your smoothies. Um, so you would probably need to blanch them and then puree them and then freeze it and then you could add it to your smoothies. I, I feel like there's a lot of ways that you could mask the taste of carrot in a smoothie so that wouldn't be that big of a deal. Obviously you can just eat them fresh. Carrots do last quite a while in the fridge I would say. Um, so the other thing you could do is you could dehydrate them or freeze dry them. You could use them then in soup or um, you know add it into pastas or things like that. Whatever you'd want to have some kind of chopped vegetables in you could add into that. Um, <clears throat> so my sausage, I'm gonna freeze dry that. I love to have that in kind of our long-term storage options. Um, it's a high protein, you know, that we can keep in long-term storage that would be super easy to rehydrate or frankly, they're kind of good just by themselves. Um, I do keep usually some of those in the truck just because Jameson loves them. And I'd rather hand him that than something that has no protein and then he's hungry in five minutes. Um, there was the fish too that I got from this. So with your fish, you could do a few things. You could, um, our favorite way to, to do fish is in the air fryer. So we just lay it in the air fryer, usually like 400 for 10 minutes, get you to the temp that you need to be. Um, and it's delicious, it's got a little bit of a crispy outside, you know, whatever. So I think we got cod and haddock this time. Um, you could also cut it up and do fish jerky in your dehydrator. Um, I have not freeze dried fish fish yet, um, or canned fish for that matter. It is on my list. I, I don't know that I'm going to do that right now. Um, but that would be an option is you could pressure can your fish. Um, I was just looking in a Facebook group and people were talking about canning like salmon and things like that, which I think is a great idea. It's a great way to get some omega threes and some good protein on your shelf. Um, <clears throat> the jerky is fun too, and you can easily, especially, well, here in Pennsylvania, um, you know, you could keep that in your vehicle over the winter and it wouldn't get too warm or weird or anything like that because it's, it's cold out now. You know, we're averaging like fifties ish and even down into freezing at night. So um, that would certainly work for you too. There is mold or something is smelly or weird or whatever. Um, not if you've let it sit on your counter for 10 days, but like you take it home and you're looking at stuff and there's mold, um, then email Flash Food. They will give you your money back on it. Um, also, sometimes some locations will pre-bag things. There's two that I know of for sure that will pre-bag. And so, you know, you're not going to I guess you could. You're not going to stand there and like count everything out while you're, you know, the point is that they can just send it with you. So if you get home, you're counting your stuff out and stuff is missing. Also, email Flash Food. Sometimes it takes a day or two for them to get back to you, um, but they will handle it. They always do. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is wanted that to talk about pickup. So when you see it, it'll say like best by October 23rd or whatever. Um, you have to pick it up by the 23rd. So like if I order something today and it expires or expires on the app tomorrow, I have to pick it up tomorrow. Sometimes like our local giant closes at 11. So sometimes I'll be like sitting here on the couch and it's nine o'clock at night and it's like a really good thing. So we'll like run out and get it because I have to get it that day if it expires that day. 
occasionally, I haven't had this happen too often, but occasionally you'll have a store that'll say, oh, well, it expired today, so we got rid of it. I don't understand that logic. That's happened to me a couple times, and I just get a refund from Flash Food. It's annoying, but whatever. It, you know, it's different stores, different policies, I guess, whatever. So if you run into that problem, always contact Flash Food if you have a problem because they are really, really good about giving you back your money. They don't question it. You know, they don't like give you the runaround or whatever. They just refund the money and everybody moves. The on. last thing that we got on this Flash Food haul was Asiago cheese. So we got these packs. I think they were maybe a dollar something. Um, super cheap compared to, you know, again, half price. So super cheap compared to what they would normally be. Um, so we'll probably just eat those. I think I got 10 of them. But, you know, with a family of five, it's not going to take very long to go through a little eight ounce block of cheese. So if there was way more than that, or maybe it was just me and Zad or something, um, I could freeze dry that and make my own cheese powder. Um, not a ton you can throw it in the freezer of course um not a ton of options for cheese so we do make some of our own cheese we make ricotta uh cottage cheese things like that from our goat milk um hard cheeses is not a road i have traveled yet i would love to i'd love to make my own sharp cheddar and things like that um so when i see deals like that um you know i do try to grab it i know it's not like the best quality dairy but yeah, I can't do everything and there are some things I don't know. So like how to make hard cheese. I haven't I haven't done that yet. So um that's probably something we'll just eat fresh. It and I might throw some in the freezer, but it'll it'll keep for quite a while. You know, and that's the other thing is most of this stuff is usually close to date, but it's not always close to date. We've gotten stuff that's been dated like into months into the next year. Um it could just be that the packaging has changed or the store's not carrying it anymore or things like that. Um, we've gotten tons of like really bougie chocolate, like high quality dark chocolate, like 80% dark chocolate. That's normally like five, $6 a bar. Um, you know, it wasn't on flash food, but at giant, they had it in the clearance section and we got it for like 75 cents a bar. Well, of course we stocked up on it because, you know, for us in our weight loss journey and our journey towards health, you know, not that we never have a piece of cake or whatever, but our like sweet, um, craving thing that we keep on hand is dark chocolate and it usually is enough to curb it. Um, and I've talked about this a little bit on Facebook is like as recovering food addicts, we have to keep something on hand. You know, we're not going to keep a bag of Oreos in the pantry one because Oreos are full of crap and I'm not saying they're not delicious because they are definitely delicious, but we do not have the self control. So we would get a pack of Oreos and they'd be gone in like two days, like prior to Zed's heart attack, because we'd have like two and then four and then six and like Oreos, you know, they're just, you can just eat so many of them at one time. So now in, you know, this journey towards better health and whole health, um, we've been keeping the dark chocolate on hand and it is a huge help in, you know, so everybody gets a few squares or whatever after dinner, or, you know, if they need a little sweet treat or something, get a square or two and it doesn't kibosh, you know, your calorie deficit for the day. And you know, there's good stuff in it. You could get your antioxidants if you're having like good pure dark chocolate. So, um, on that note, I have always, my mom definitely instilled this in me is, you know, we didn't have flesh food as a kid, obviously, but you know, back in the nineties, she was couponing and I remember her doing things with UPCs and like, she was super like super coupon mom at that time. Um, and we had all kinds, I, well, as a child, you know, probably because she was so thrifty with this kind of thing. So I think using flash food, if it's available in your area, and if not, email them. So like go to their website and email them. They are super responsive. They have really great customer service. Um, they've always responded. Like if I go, sometimes you'll go and get your flash food and like something will be missing, especially when you get huge amounts like this. So if you're getting 20 containers of strawberries and they only have 15, some stores will just give you five new ones. Some stores will say you need to just email for a refund. Um, don't fret if they say you need to email for a refund because they are really good about refunds. Um, I've never had them say, oh no, you need to prove this or that or whatever. When I first started using Flash Food, this used to stress me out to no end because I'm like, well, what if they say that I can't get my money back or something? You know, and if it's five packs of strawberries we're talking like almost 15 you know 12 ish dollars or whatever that i didn't you know 12 dollars times multiple trips of flash food is a lot of money so 
that's my first tip about that. They have really great customer service. If they're not in your area, email them and let them know. They want to know where people want to see them. Um, also is they have fruit boxes. So you got to watch your fruit boxes. Like if it's a box of apples, like it might be a deal. It just depends what apple prices are like in your area. Um, in the winter though, that definitely might be a deal because you might not be able to get local apples. So that, you know, $5 for, it's a decent sized box. I would say it's probably like 15 by eight by 12 ish maybe. Um, and they're really nice boxes. So if you're one of those, I keep really nice box people, then they're great for that. We use them to ship orders like fire starters or put them in our pickup box and people order fire starters. So they're really nice boxes. Um, but we've gotten boxes where we get six bags of grapes. Okay, so I don't know about you, but like, you know, you see grapes are on sale for two ninety nine a pound or whatever, and you're like, oh, this is so great. And like, you sit it on the belt and in your mind, it should be two ninety nine, and it's totally not. It's like, it's still $8 or $9, even though it was on sale. Um, so I got six bags of grapes for $5. It would have probably been, I'm guessing at least $30 for the grapes that I got. Um, I've seen ones with pineapple in them. So you figure like a pineapple is three bucks and then they pile a bunch of fruit on top. That's a deal. So there's definitely, the fruit boxes can definitely be a great deal. Um, if you're someone who doesn't make your own bread, I've often seen like bougie bread on there. Um, we actually got this bread not long ago. This is the organic multi-grain with quinoa, sprouted, et cetera, et cetera bread. Um, and we do make bread, but when I see that, you know, we don't make quinoa bread. So, you know, we grabbed it cause I think it was two something. And again, it's normally over $5. So, um, how do I decide what to get on flash food? I personally do not buy a whole lot of meat. Um, but we get most of our meat either from our backyard or we get it from local farmers. So getting meat short of wild caught fish, it's not a huge priority for me. Um, I said that I get that organic sausage. Um, it's organic, so I guess I take a little bit of peace that it's not like as crappy as mainstream sausage and I like it for long-term storage. But if you're someone who doesn't have access to local farms with meat, um, if you simply just can't afford to buy like a quarter of beef or something at a time um, and you, you know your goal is just to fill bellies, then I always see meat on there. Beef and chicken and um, turkey. There's like legs, you know, drumsticks, things like that um, for cheap. You know, my parents often will get the chicken and they freeze dry the chicken for their dog because she's super picky and she doesn't love like mainstream dog food, which, you know, hey, whatever, good for her. So they'll get that on there. So you can definitely get meat on there if that's what you're in the market for. I primarily go after the vegetables and the bougier kinds of meat. Um, so that's what I do with my flash food hauls. Um, if you have questions about how I use flash food, um, I was going to show you like the process of making the soup and everything, but I think we'll just save that for another video. I think there was a lot of good information in this video. Um, you know, for you to at least start looking at flash food. Um, on this same route, there's also an app called, I think it's called Too Good To Go. Um, and it's restaurants that like at the end of the day, they have like bags of bagels or things like that, um, that they didn't sell. So check and see, it hasn't come to our area. It seems to be closer to Philadelphia at this point. Maybe it's in other parts of the country, I'm not sure. Um, but look and see what's around your area. And if not, Maybe you start an initiative for these things. Maybe you reach out to the company, see if, you know, like all this stuff is going in the trash. So if we can take a step towards not putting it in the trash, and then, you know, the other ticket is when you get it home, you take care of it quickly. Um, and I know that that doesn't always happen, you know, and there's no shame in if you got a few things, hold on one second. There's no shame in if you got a few things and it needs to go to your chickens or your pigs or whatever. Hold on one second, hold on, hold on. Um, it's happened to me, you know, it never fails that like I get these huge hauls and then I'm sick or a baby's sick or whatever. So if that happens, you know, feed it to your compost, feed it to your chickens. Um, you know, obviously financially you don't want that to become a habit, but it, it happens. I mean, life as a parent or just life in general, it happens. So enjoy your flash food hauls. Let me know if you have questions. If you want my referral code, I'm going to put that in the description so you can check that out. Um, with the referral code, okay, make sure you're sending your referral code to people too. I forgot to talk about that. So send your referral code to people because you save $8 and they save $8 on their first $10 purchase. Well, I've gotten referral codes, I don't know, 
probably 10 or 15 times. That's a lot of groceries. You know, we're talking $100 in groceries I've gotten for free just for talking about flash food. So let me know if you have questions. You can always check out the home setting resources on our website at travelhillforge.com and we'll see you guys next video.